Okay, now let's talk about epigenetics. Uh, mm -hmm. Elena, please tell me what that is before we then move into its role. Mm -hmm. What does it sure. really mean? So epigenetics is uh, a very exciting area of biology that has to do with uh, basically gene expression. So what does, uh, what does this mean is that epigenetics uh, is a mechanism that controls which genes will be active in, in, in which cells and which genes will be inactive. So uh, let's dive into, you know, the, um, into the, the cell where you have the cytoplasm and you have the nucleus and inside the nucleus, you have your genetic material packed, your DNA. And this is packed into chromosomes and chromosomes consist of the so-called chromatin so this is like the, the DNA thread inside the chromosome uh, that needs to be actually tightly packed. And um, for this reason, we also have um, some basically protein balls um, that are called histones that are making sure that the chromatin thread is, is being wrapped around them. And then they compact this genetic material into chromosomes. So this is the kind of the, the overview of the biology there. And depends on how tightly packed are certain areas of, um, of, the, of this um, double strand DNA um, thread, um, it will, uh, this will determine what genes will be expressed in let's say your liver cell or your kidney cell or your neuronal cell. So for example, because all of our cells are coming from one source, right? So when we are an embryo, we're just uh, pluripotent embryonic stem cells, and then the cells start differentiating into different types and different tissues. And um, there are different cells that are built in the kidney and different cells that are built in the liver and the heart and so on. So in the heart, for example, we do have certain functions that the heart cells need, need to have activated um, in order for them to, to become this heart cell. So uh, in order for them to maintain their cell identity as a heart cell, they need to have um, certain genes basically being expressed. And this means that they will be uh, transcribed to, to RNA and translated into protein and so on. So what happens with epigenetic regulations, we have different chemical tags on the DNA, such as methylation, acetylation, um, and so on. And uh, we're having those different molecules be uh, uh, going around and basically tagging different genes and um, different regions of, um, you know, of our genetic material material in order to make sure that those are actually being um, activated and, and, and eventually expressed in the cell. So this is the, um, this is the process of epigenetic regulation, and it's obviously much more uh, complex even than, than what I described. I try to simplify it a lot. Um, and the methylation process is the one that uh, also plays a crucial role in, um, in epigenetic regulation. So it has to do with the gene expression and has to do with the production of, um, of neurotransmitters and so on. And it's basically an attachment of a methyl group to a molecule. And, um, and with, this, um, with this kind of methyl tax, uh, the cell realizes uh, what needs to be uh, transcribed and, and translated into protein. So that's the methylation process there. And we need to make sure that we have enough um, methyl groups for this in our bodies. And that's the reason why we need to be eating either foods that are rich in, um, in methyl groups, or uh, we need to consume some supplements that could act as a methyl donor. So those could be either um, vitamins of, uh, of the B family, so for example, folate, vitamin B6, B9, B12, and so on, or uh, it could be TMG, uh, which is a trimethyl glycine molecule, meaning that it's a glycine molecule with three methyl groups attached to it, uh, making it basically a rich methyl donor. So we're having the trimethyl glycine molecule that um, that has all this, all this methyl group sitting on it. And when we consume it, uh, uh, the methyl groups are basically um, going into the places where um, the methyl groups needs to be uh, utilized in different tissues. And glycine is actually acting as a buffer for this process. So glycine is basically regulating, um, you know, where, uh, where the methyl groups are going. If they're needed in a certain area, it's going to release the methyl groups and so on. Uh, it's, it's actually quite interesting. And that's why TMG was our second supplement that we launched with NMN Bio, because it's very important. And 
not only that, but um, you know, when you're taking the combination of Adam and, and TMG, you actually do need the TMG to ensure that you have adequate amounts of methyl groups. And the reason for this is because uh, when you consume Adam, so it, it, it's um, um, it's getting like uh, it, it it is broken down. Um, it's being metabolized in your cells, and the first N in Adam stands for nicotinamide. So this compound actually is secreted through urine and in order for it to be secreted it needs a methyl group to be attached to it so for this reason you need to make sure when you're consuming nmn that you actually are having sufficient amounts of methyl groups because um, you don't want to basically steal methyl groups from other processes such as um you know, gene expression and so on. So um, it's a very, very good combination for, for a supplement. Um, I think that everyone should be taking them together, to be honest. And that's why I thought that this is a very, very important product to launch mm -hmm. and to, um, you know, to, to have available for our customers. So NMN and TMG, very good combination. Um, and yeah, it can only, I mean, TMG is a very good supplement to take on itself as well, because there's been multiple clinical studies with TMG too. So for example, there's been nine human clinical studies where TMG has been proven clinically to lower homocysteine levels. So homocysteine is um, a harmful amino acid that is getting built up. And when it does, you actually are increasing your risk of cardiovascular disease. So by lowering homocysteine, uh, which is something that TMG does, um, you're basically reducing your risk of cardiovascular disease. And it's also been shown to aid the, um, the lipid metabolism and the liver, uh, which is also very important because liver is another organ that uh, is very crucial to basically everything. <laughs> and, you know, if our liver is not working well, uh, the rest of the body will not be working well because we need to be metabolizing um, everything that we consume, including uh, different supplements. Um, so really nice standalone supplement, but especially if you're taking an amen, uh, it's really important to make sure that you're taking the TMG as well. Is TMG therefore good for people that might be say on a carnivore diet, you know, in the sense that I'm guessing the the homocysteine levels would increase because of say red meat eating? Well, actually, because red meat is full of B12, uh, B12 is also a metal donor. So uh, this is this is very interesting. So actually, I would expect the carnivores to not have very high homocysteine levels. Wow. And uh, yes, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And. I'm I also take another supplement, um, which is like a beef liver. So I think I have it here from Ancestral Supplements. I don't have any affiliation with this company, but I just really love the product. Uh, so this is a desiccated beef liver um, that has been um, produced very nicely. So uh, they, they have a, a special, I don't know, freeze desiccation method or whatever it is they're doing, but basically all the nutrients from the liver are being preserved. And this is also a rich methyl donor, basically, essentially, because it's also rich in vitamins B and B12 as well. Um, I don't think you said this, but does methylation also decrease like NAD as we age? That's an, yeah, that's an excellent um, point. So yeah, I did not mention that, but this is what we're seeing as we age, that methylation is basically disrupted. So there are some regions of the genome that are being hypomethylated. Um, and then there are some other um, places of the genome that are basically hypermethylated. And this has to do with the fact that our um, epigenetics uh, and our gene expression is uh, becoming like less and less efficient and less loose, let's say, with time. And this is where the concept of senescence is coming into play as well, because this is why um, the cell is basically getting confused, because now when the epigenetic regulation is not that tightly regulated, there are some genes that, that will be upregulated when they shouldn't. So, for example, in a liver uh, cell, you will have some other genes upregulated and expressed that uh, that would need to be uh, upregulated in a uh, neuron, for example. So now the liver cell is confused and, um, you know, it doesn't know what to do. It has an identity crisis. So, um, you know, it's um, 
quite interesting to see that this is happening with time. And then eventually, when you do have uh, a few of those disruptions within the cell in terms of the epigenetic regulation and the gene expression, the cell will eventually stop dividing because it will say, okay, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Uh, I'll just stop dividing because I don't want to kind of risk it and become a cancerous cell or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then um, it just stops dividing and becomes a senescent cell, which means it's just a zombie cell sitting there, not doing anything, um, starts creating inflammatory phenotypes, um, sorry, inflammatory signals that will basically turn other um, neighboring cells into senescent cells as well, uh, because it's basically saying, you know, look, the environment is not, it's not good. So yes, it's a whole, like, it, it's basically, it's all connected. It's really interesting yeah. to see how the epigenetic regulation can uh, basically govern so many processes, including actually the senescent cells when the epigenetic regulation becomes more, less efficient. Wow, clean up those senescent cells. Another question, actually, on this subject. Um, I read, I think it's uh, Dr. Peter's book, Professor, well, I think it's Professor Peter's, I can't remember his name now, um, all about dirty genes. Is mm -hmm. this something that you agree with? In other words, the concept of the fact that we have these dirty genes that either may just remain dormant in our body or if activated because of high stress, be that physical or mental stress, then these dirty genes can you know, be, um, cause us to have autoimmune or various other conditions. And if that is something that you agree with, in other words, the concept of these dirty genes, can improving your methylation help to clean up those dirty genes? I may be completely confusing the whole thing here, by the way, so I don't know, but mm -hmm. am I, is there any relevance here? Yeah, so what happens is that we are being born with a certain genetic material uh, with our genes and different predispositions for diseases and so on. And this is just a tiny fraction of what we are and what's, what's happening um, later in life because uh, the epigenetic regulation of, of different genes and you know the different gene expression that we have is actually quite dynamic. It's a dynamic process and it's not stable at all. So it's changing over time and we can actually influence it quite a lot. So for example, if you know, we're having a healthy lifestyle and we're exercising three, four times a week. Um, you know, the, the whole epigenetic um, landscape will look different than if we just have a sedentary lifestyle, uh, not exercising at all, uh, at all and so on. So um, I, it's not about the dirty genes. It's about what we're like. Um, it's about the environment that we create for our genes, because this is what impacts the epigenetic regulation. And as we, um, you know, as we uh, have more and more breakthroughs in science, we realize that actually, wait a minute. Um, you know, the, the, this process can be influenced quite a lot, but different things by, uh, you know, supplementation. So uh, maintaining optimal uh, methylation is definitely something that uh, that is of interest for everyone, I think. But also um, there is no such thing as, you know, the fountain of youth or one pill that will make you, um, you know, completely healthy and so on. So, you know, you need to factor in the exercise or for example, okay, you're saying you want to, um, you, you want to have some, like a healthy lifestyle so you started exercising now but then your diet is still crap and you're eating you know pizza every day or every other day you know like what do you think is going to happen so your metabolism will still be crap for because of this um so um it's not about the dirty genes it's about what we do with them i think and uh the epigenetic factors that we are trying to understand more and more now and kind of shed in light into how this whole system works um it's a very important point and the uh, the take home positive message here is that we can actually influence our epigenetics we can make sure that um, you know, we're, we're doing our best every day. And then this translates into health. And on that note, so um, yesterday, I told you that I, I went to a birthday party, I was sitting next to um next to a woman. And she was telling me that, Oh, um, you look so fit. 
of what do you do? And I'm like, and I started talking about, you know, intermittent fasting and the fact that I'm avoiding carbs most of the time and things like that. And she's like, oh, intermittent fasting. So what is your fasting window? Is seven to seven? And I'm like, well, no, my fasting window is like 12 to four. It's like four hours. She's like, oh, oh, that's that's really tight. And then she's like, why are you doing all, all these things? You look so healthy. And uh, and I'm like, yeah, I'm healthy because, <laughs> because. I'm doing <laughs> funny isn't it yeah yeah so you know i i think that's the uh that's the main point here uh, that there are actually quite a lot of things that are in our control and of course also stress is another factor of course and this is something that i actually haven't mastered yet because i have a very very uh busy schedule you know i'm running nmn bio and it's growing rapidly it's really nice to see how much it's growing and um you know we have many like we, we have thousands of customers um, like all over the world. And actually I was looking into the statistics and now we have customers in over 60 countries, which is like super wow. crazy because, you know, we just launched the company like over a year ago and we're already expanding really, uh, really rapidly, but this keeps me busy. Uh, so, you know, at least I have my NMN and my TMG <laughs> to keep me healthy. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And, but as you say, I mean, that takes its toll, doesn't it? And I think this is, um, uh, I had this uh, very interesting conversation with somebody that uh, is a, um, a, profesh- uh, a professor in psychoneuroimmunology, and we were discussing the role of, um, or rather the impact of being a successful or doing type of personality, and that it's you in particular, as in personality types like yours, that you need to figure out how to find that balance, because although yeah. it's all positive doing creative uh, work um uh that that does mean that because of the passion and the energy that you put into it that you're going to put in more hours than would be a standard nine to five job for example yeah. that's all fine because you're doing it with the right mindset but actually that can still take its toll so yeah going back to that conversation with you and that um that other lady maybe she'll realize from that conversation what that all means in other words yes I may look good uh, but that only is because of all the protocols that I have in in place and it's important to point that out and I think you have already that actually there is no one panacea there is no one thing that fixes you and if you ever have that kind of psychology you're always going to be absolutely wrong it comes down to your whole existence how you wake up in the morning how you set your intention for the day um, Mm -hmm. getting that blood moving around getting the oxygen moving around um, tapping into different practices throughout the day to make sure, especially if you've been sat down for too long, that you're still moving the blood flow around your, your body, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Anyway.